$200, a Super Nintendo setup costs twice as much as the old system. For the money, the company promises better pictures, sound, and adventure. Now you're playing with power. Super power. You're the king, I tell you! You're the king! Only for Super NES. You're listening to the SNES Podcast with your host, Soul Blazer. Hello folks, this is Super NES Podcast, episode number 230. Uh, I'm Greg, joined by always by Joe. Hello. And uh, this episode, uh, since we've covered some very heavy games as of recently, Joe and I decided to take... Um, you know, and also Joe and I have, a very per- have also been very busy recently in our personal lives. Uh, the combination of those reasons, we decided to take a more lighter game to cover in this episode. Uh, the first of several, not planned, but the first of several games with Super in the title. So, uh, <laughs> like you're in for a super stretch of the podcast coming up pretty soon here, it looks like. Uh, we're covering Super R-Type in uh, this episode. So, I mean, Super Nintendo had a lot of those games in Super, the super Nintendo anyways. It's not really, right, so, right, so, right. So, so it's not really that hard to do this, but uh, we don't usually have games lined up back to back to back uh, like this. But right. you know, just but you know, like the accidental, like the accidental movie trilogy we did last year. I mean, uh, I mean, this is going to be an accidental, uh, accidental, accidental super trilogy. So, yep. um, anyway, uh, yeah, shooters, shooters are great material to cover to, to cover like for a lighter episode. So, um, so uh, I like so I was happy to play this. You know, I've always been a big fan of shooters. Shooters are like my like favorite genres. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of the like, like a huge fan of the, like, a, like a huge fan of the Gradius series. So. Um, the, um, you know, the games and, and other games by the type. Um, I played this game when it first came out. Have not played it for, have not, have not played it again for like many, many years. Uh, Joe, you didn't have an experience with this game, correct? I did not have any experience with okay. this game. Have you had any experience with the R type games, uh, like at all? Um, I had the original one on the NES. Oh, they did put that to NES, did they? Um, yeah, I thought they did at least uh, one of the R-Type games. I don't see that one here being listed. Hmm. Maybe mm. I played it on the Famicom emulating? Uh, maybe. Uh, the first game... Or, yeah, or I'm confusing it with Gradius, which is possible. Yeah, pro- possibly, yeah, because <laughs> um, the Game Boy definitely got ports, like ports of those games, but... Uh, you know, the, the NES never got it. Uh, there's there's reasons why the game never came out in NES, which is to, which, to, which is similar to history of the game, which we'll get to here like in a moment. But um, yeah, um, so our type is a series that has never been quite as popular as Gradius uh, or some of the other shooter games out there, but this. But the franchise definitely has had its like fans over the years. Um, you know, it's always a, um, you know, like it's always a very like dedicated fan base like this day because the first R type when it came back in when it came out back in 1987 uh, was a very groundbreaking game like in many ways. Uh, and definitely, uh, um, yeah, you know, and the success of that first game definitely to help pave the way for other games, for other games, for other games like type to come. So our type is developed by IREM, a uh, Japanese a Japanese game, game company. Uh, they've done other games. Uh, but but definitely our type series is definitely the definitely the franchise that to the for the franchise that Iram is best like is best known for. Uh, Iram also if you're also like an old school arcade player like I am, you may also know Iram the Iram's company that's behind uh, the very popular arcade games uh, Moon Patrol uh, and Kung Fu Master, uh, which came out like in the early '80s. So um, this company this company's still around. Uh, but over you know, the last ten years or so, uh, they have transitioned away from console games, like, the, like some of the uh, console games, like, like some of the like some of the kind of game companies have done, uh, to, to, to focus entirely, uh, to focus entirely like, upon the pachinko market. So, uh, you know, shades of what Konami is doing these days and whatnot. Yay, pachinko! But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so yeah, but I remember still still around. They still they still license their properties to other, to other companies. They still make they still make collections. Uh, and re-release of their games uh, on modern systems, on modern systems, systems like this day. So, uh, you know, uh, and there was, new, um, you know, and there was, as we talk about, a, a brand new, a brand new, a brand new R-type game done last year by a different company. Uh, but, 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 you know, REM is still active, uh, active in the market, at least to some degree these days. So, um, 
the copy dates back to 1974, so they did so they like definitely have like a long history. So, um, our type being very popular was poured to uh, um, uh, 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 was poured to many um, like poured to many systems the uh, to many systems that kind of computers 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 of the day uh, because the game's so popular. Um, um, uh, our type was also our type was also where our type was also available to, was also available available like in the arcades, which probably which, which, which probably where, where, where people like played it at. Uh, mm. Nintendo uh, published the game outside of Japan, uh, like the um, you like the arcade market because like <coughs> sorry uh, because Iram didn't really have much of an arcade presence of their their presence presence by the presence by the late eighties. The game, of course, being so popular, did spawn a sequel, Archetype 2, which came out in 1989. Uh, um, and that game, um, that game also got some uh, ports. Uh, it was not possible to port the game straight to Super NES, Super NES, however, because, however, because the game, because the game was so, the, the game was so, was, was so powerful and so complicated, and there was no way the console, the, the console, the console, the console, the, the console like a hand to it. At least at the time, you know, this was, you know, this is early Super NES days, 1991. Uh, I'm sure later generations of carts could have handled the game like all right, but um, you know, at the time period, the developers just felt they couldn't really get the game, like, get the game on the uh, get the game on the system. So, so what they did is, so, so like they did instead, like they bastardized it. Um, they took the first, uh, they took the first four stages from the third stage of our Type Two, added in three new ones. Uh, made some other uh, uh, downgrade the game to be to, to downgrade the game to be a fit onto a cart and released in the system super R type. So uh, the game we got here in the console is kind of half R type two, half new. So um, you know they weren't the only company to do that certainly back in the day, but this is the uh, back in the day, but this is one of the more interesting examples. Uh, we would not see a full release of R type two here in the West. Uh, like to, uh, I mean, like to, uh, like to a collection of the PlayStation, like, late 90s. So, uh, there was, however, a sequel, uh, R-Type 3, which, which did get ported to Super DS pretty much, pretty much straight on in 1993. We'll cover that game also at some point in the future. So, uh, uh after that, um, after that you had, like, two, the, the, um, after that, after that you had, after that you had, you had two of the R-Type games. Then there was a very long break, be a break, be a break before a new game came out. And then, and then a new game came out to, 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 to 2021. And then finally, as I mentioned before, a new game, our type of Final 3 Evolved, came out last year for the PS5. So, um, even though IRIM is not directly involved, in it, like involved with two games, uh, it is it is encouraging. It is interesting to see that the R-Type games have had a recent revival as of late, which is why I said the franchise never been, which is why the franchise, the franchise has never been super super popular. But it was obviously popular enough, like them, um, you know, for them Warren made like new games. So, uh, and there are also some spin-offs, the spin-offs that have been made. Um, or, you know, are you know, arcade games, uh, um, uh, mobile games, um, two interesting um, tactical role-playing game spin-offs, which uh, hmm. which actually which actually getting which actually are getting like a, another which actually are getting a compilation release uh, on modern systems uh, later on this year in the West. That's uh, that's interesting. Uh, interesting. I may have to check that. You know, I never I never heard those games. I may have to check those out. Oh, um, interesting. But uh, uh, R Type Two is available also uh, is available also with the first game in modern collections. Uh, the newest one that came out is the came out they came out it's called R Type Dimensions, which came in 2018 for the Switch, uh, PS4, and Steam. So if you want to play the original arcade game, you can get it that way. Um, the, uh, Super R Type itself was available uh, on the Wii Virtual Console, but it's not been available uh, for, and not been available um, uh, since then. So I guess I figured because of the fact that the original arcade arcade game is now available now that there, there, there really wasn't there really wasn't like a need to. So um, so so uh, in Japan, North America, I rem also published uh, our Super R Type. Nintendo picked up the publishing rights uh, to release it like release in Europe. Came out came out in North America. Um, uh, in September of 1991, about three, like about like about three the, the, about ten weeks after its Japanese release, and came out in Europe the following year. So, um, given how this is an early Super NES game, this game is typical. Of, uh, this game's typical, like of many other early Super NES games, in the sense that it's very flashy, it's very showy. They're obviously they're obviously trying to show off the hardware the hardware a lot here by saying by saying like you know look how good these graphics are look how good the music is that kind of stuff um but the game's slow it's definitely a sluggish definitely a slow down that kind of stuff so um that's why i said if they'd wait several years um 
I'm sure they could have ported, 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 ported the original arcade game to the system with much better results. But not this is a bad port of the game. It's just like I said, you have to, um, you have to, have, um, you have to, um, you have to keep mind the same limitations for this game. That Gradius Three also suffered from the time, the stuff from the time period, uh, like a whatnot. So, having said that, this is a typical shooter in many ways. Uh, you have your power ups, uh, it's side scrolling, seven stages, as I mentioned before, boss at the end. Um, uh, uh, thinking of the formula, uh, the, 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 a couple interesting things this game has. You have, you have the choice of either doing normal shots or your shots where you can also hold down the button, like for a charge shot, shot, which is very useful against bosses. Um, many bosses, if you, if many bosses, if you know where and how to shoot, you can destroy them very, very easily with like one or two, like charge shots. So, charge shots is definitely a very good weapon to use, um, um, against bosses. So, something else that's also, like, something else that's also interesting in this game is like, um, there are three difficult levels you can pick from at the start of the game, easy, easy, normal, and hard. However, you have to, however, however, you have to, however, you have to beat the game in hard to unlock the final difficulty mode, uh, which is the, which is the, which which is which is so-called true difficulty uh, mode uh, pro, and yet it's like to beat the game on that setting to see the true ending of the game. So uh, they're they're definitely they're definitely encouraging they're encouraging playing the game a lot. So as a matter of yeah. fact, um, there is a there is there is a YouTuber by the name Peg uh, who I really like. He does a lot of like shooting uh, playthroughs, uh, shooting game playthroughs uh, 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 on YouTube and. He's he he's a master of a player. He he did so he did one so he so he did a playthrough of Super Archetype a couple years ago where he did that. He did two all clear no miss playthroughs of the game on both hard and pro, and a, um you know just to um you know and uh just to just to, oh oh also to cut you, also before I comment on that another 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 thing this game does differently than many other games is that this game is this game is very brutal and uh, very brutal not because it's not because it's overly difficult, <clears throat> it's, it's not that bad and uneasy, but for some reason the developers also decided to drive home the home release version of the game and the fact that this game is very unique, uh, you're very unique in that if you die, there's no checkpoint. It talks you all the way back to the start of the game, uh, I'm sorry, the start of the stage. So, and that is very, very harsh and very, very brutal. So, um, in his comments, uh, on the game when he plays it through on YouTube, Peg mentions, the, uh, Peg mentions that, um, out of all the, like, all the Super Nintendo shooters, shooters I've played, uh, this one stands, this one stands like above them all. It probably doesn't, it probably doesn't look that bad, to, it probably doesn't look that hard for the video. Once you play it, you figure out quite fast how ridiculous and rage inducing that this game is. Um, uh, it's a single mistake on stage six or seven, loop two was pretty much like pretty much getting over, and fifty minutes, fifty minutes down, fifty minutes, de- fifty minutes de- uh, lost. Now I try to have that happen to you about twenty times before you clear the game. Now I have your hard, now I have your recording hardware, 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 hardware malfunction, and now your play gets lost. And then I have to play another twenty hours before you clear it. That's my life, you know, th- you know that's my life, life last month or so. So. Um, Mad respect to this guy for do for like what he does. So if you want to see somebody play through this game and master master degree, I definitely recommend checking out. I definitely recommend looking up you know, look at his videos on, on YouTube. So uh, having said that, yeah, I agree. With, yeah, I agree. I agree with pretty much everything that he said. Uh, this game, this game, this game, this game is brutal because of the fact that it tossed you all the way back to the way back to start, 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 start the stage if you die. So um, I don't I don't know exactly why they did that just to make it difficult for. Uh, you more difficult for home release, I guess. But um, if it wasn't that one thing, I, I did one thing I definitely would enjoyed the game better than I did. So, um, so this was your first time playing the game, Joe. I'm curious to hear like, your thoughts. <laughs> All right. Um, so pod placement is essential. Yes. Um, yeah. That that's the first thing I'm going to put out there. Um, whether you put it out in front of you. Um, in the rear of the ship, or if you detach it so that it can just shoot lasers everywhere. Um, either way, your pod is and can be a lifesaver. Um, in my experience, um, the pod was the one thing that extended my gameplay. Um, I, I, embarrassingly, I think I died... Mm, died and continued. Thank God for infinite continues. Um... But I died and continued uh, just on the first level. I think ten to fifteen times before I got to the end. Um, brutal, and absolutely brutal. Mm-hmm. Um, on top of that, um, I did like there's an auto fire button. 
So that is a, a welcome. Uh, any shooter that I don't have to sit there and mash the button, I can just hold it down. That is a welcome feature. So thank you for that. Um, there is seven stages. Thankfully, there's a password system. So you don't have to, you know, play from level one when it's all said and done. Um, you can kind of skip around, but the thing is, is that, um, like George had, uh, uh, yeah, Greg, sorry, <laughs> Greg <laughs> <That's> had <okay>. mentioned, <laughs> he's, he's uh, a podcast of George, so I get it. Right, so. right. <laughs> um, there's no checkpoints. So, um, you make it to the boss and you die. See you later. Uh, mm -hmm. you won't be seeing that boss again, at least not for a few minutes. And, uh, I actually think this is a blessing and a curse. So yes, it sucks that it sends you all the way back to the beginning, but also because it sends you all the way back to the beginning. Yes. You have to go through all that brutal difficulty that you already dealt with, but you can also regain all your power ups. So this way, when you get back to the boss, you're not underpowered. You're still at the same power. You can learn from the mistake that you made. Um, I'm just going to go into it now because it's, it's, it leads into my next point. Um, this game, I think personally, especially for an early Super Nintendo game, gorgeous. I think yeah, it looks yeah. fantastic. I love the, the variations on the levels, all that. That being said, these levels are so gorgeous and they have so much stuff coming at you that it will slow down the game to a crawl at some points. It's bad. Now... There's two ways to look at this. Either a blessing one, and a curse. Yep. <laughs> right, right. So one, it, it's a curse because it is infuriating to see it slow down like that. Um, but if you could adapt to it, it is a blessing. I actually, there were times where I was avoiding ships so that more of them would get on stage. So this way it would cause the game to start stuttering and slow down so that I could start dodging bullets and being able to, you know, kill the enemies that were legit trying to kill me um so it it ended up becoming a strategy in the game to like when should i allow enough enemy ships to build up to where there's a bit of slowdown to where i can take advantage of that um but yeah the the slowdown is really like the one thing i'm gonna say about this game like is if there was no slowdown this game would be great and i think the difficulty still is up there and it sucks, you know, and no checkpoints is definitely brutal, but also like if you didn't have the slowdown, it wouldn't take as long to get back to the progress that you made. <laughs> right. So, so, yeah. So, uh, the average, the a an average play through this game is about an hour, assuming that you don't die, uh, right. very often, uh, or like, or, or at all. Even speedrunners have not been able to prove that time very much. The speedrun, um, uh, um, uh, the, speed, the speedrun of this game is like 42 minutes. So, yeah. um, but yeah, so I definitely agree with everything that you just said. Um, slowdown for this game may be the worst slowdown in a Super NES game I've played at, uh, played at this point. Um, not even Gravity 3 had slowdown this bad. So, um, it's um, definitely the worst I've seen on the system so yeah. far. So I think most of the difficulty of this game is artificial in nature. In nature, if I mean that you know, if the game didn't have slowdown, if the game allowed checkpoints, you know, the um, uh, then the then on easy, the game would be uh, easy as a matter of fact. Right. Um, uh, but because uh, because overall because overall difficulty of this game, I think uh, the overall difficulty of this game, I think is on par a bit easier than a Gravity's game, but. Um, because the power system in this game is not as complicated as Regrides uses, therefore, it's not quite, uh, um, therefore it doesn't hurt you quite as bad, um, if you die. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing though, like about the, like about the checkpoints. In Gradius, if you die, um, you often can be screwed because you don't have a chance to, to just like, like change the power ship back up again. At least in our type, if you go back to begin the stage, you have a chance to make it back there with your power ups intact this time. So, right, right. like, so, like, so, like, so many things we were saying before, it's a blessing and a curse. But, yep. um, if you play this game, 
if you want to play this game nowadays, I definitely recommend Emulation. So like you can use save states. Um, yep. Many fans of the franchise, like I said, do not do not play this game anymore these days. It's definitely not as popular as it used to be because of the fact that the art there because of all these problems that we talked about and because the arcade game is available now in the modern collection. So, um, like I said, and like I said at the beginning, this the, 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 um, this game this game just a bastardization of like half that or half an arcade game, like half brand new material. So yeah, um, but yeah, so. Um, you know, having said all that, Joe, I definitely agree with you that the slowdown does give you a chance to be able to survive situations that normally you wouldn't be able to. So, in some ways, this actually may be a good. In some ways, this actually may be like a good, good game for a like good game for a like good game for a beginner to check out because you know you will be able to use the mechanics of how shooting game operates right. uh, on those things before those elements before you go off to a more difficult game. So, uh, conversely. Like I said, this game this game is so interesting in many ways because in many ways in many ways because it's a contrast in so many ways. It's like it's like good on one hand, bad uh, bad in the other. <laughs> um, and so many aspects across the across the whole game. It's a very like it's a very interesting case study. Yeah, for sure. But uh, um, but overall, though, um, you know, like um, uh, so overall, like so overall, how do you enjoy your time with the game, though? I mean, once I figured out how to deal and manipulate the slowness um and whatnot in the game i thought overall it's a pretty good game um i spoiler i did kind of jump ahead and play r type 3 just because i was curious as yeah. to whether or not that one was just as bad as this one no it's better um, <laughs> I, I was gonna say i'm happy to report that is not the case and yes. when we cover that game i will go into detail but um yeah i was pleasantly surprised by what they were able to do a couple years later and i agree with you like maybe they should have just kind of held off and not made this port you know and just waited a few years but also like maybe this was the programming you know trial they had to go through to get to what we got with our type three sure. so you know, like I said before, this game's typical of many early Super Nintendo releases. So, you know, I'm not going to... Obviously, obviously, releases of games... Uh, sorry, obviously, or obviously, early releases for system are not, are not as polished as later, as later, as later games are. Right, we, right, right. Like, we know that. So, um, you know, I don't... You know, by the standards of the time, this is a very good game. Um, you know, nowadays, because of the problems we just talked about... Uh, this game's this game's falling into favor with like many people, and it's not uh, people as as the ratings will will cover when we get to those later on. Yeah, yeah. But the time period, if the time period, this was a very good game. So you know, I, I you know, I, I remember this game being talked about quite a lot when it came out because uh, because even though it was known the game wasn't straight, it was known the game wasn't straight ported an arcade game. However, it was the first R type game available on a console before if you wanted to play an R type game. Yeah, you you played it out of a computer. You know, like an Amiga right. and Atari or something like or something like that. So, uh, for people who want to play this game at home, this was the first experience for them. So, yeah, um, yeah. But I agree with you. For an early game, though, the graphics are very good. Uh, they definitely push the graphics very hard. They, uh, they, 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 they definitely advertise the graphics. The graphics very heavily uh, with this game. Uh, and by early Super Nintendo standards, like it's very good. Um, yeah. M- music, music. I think is a mixed bag. Um, <laughs> Shooters, I think, need to have a very good soundtrack. Uh, um, uh, it really helps the overall ambience for the game. The, 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 uh, um, you know, the greatest games, for example, the, the play have a great soundtracks. Um, the music, the music of this game is good. I think. I think the music from stage one is the best, like the best, the song in the game, bar none. Yep. But um, <laughs> the later, the, the later stages, they're not bad music. It just like it's just very more average sounding. Um, in the sense that it, in, in, in the sense that while it works and fits the theme of the game, it's nowhere near as memorable as a, a memorable, memorable as the Gradius series. So my exact note is the music is pretty good. That bass slaps hard. Yes, it um, does. <laughs> and, uh, you know, overall, the music, especially as it gets later in the game, it reminded me of uh, hotel elevator music, like in like an upscale oh, yeah, hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because yeah, it's, yeah. it's that jazz kind of sound that they're going sure, for. Right, yeah. And it works. It works. It does. Uh, but it's just not something i like i expected more of an up-tempo and like more excited score and that's not what we got as we got later on like if everything was like stage one moving forward fantastic soundtrack would have been great i could have dealt with everything this game threw at me um but like 
not having that good music soundtrack to go with it, it, in my opinion, is also another strike on this game for me not to continue playing it or to go back to it at any point. So I'll mention this here because it kind of fits in. Uh, one of the one of the codes this game offers, uh, and this is pretty unique for a console game to offer, I think, is it's possible to be able to hear remixes of this, uh, the remixes of the music in this game. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Um, it, if you go into the background test uh, on the game, pick a track, and then push the R button, like push the R button to, to make the music fade out. While it's fading, keep pushing the R button uh, repeatedly, and you hear musical tones played over and over again. And then eventually, like eventually, you hear like a remix version, um, a remix version, or a remix version like that song, like start playing. Oh, huh. interesting. Yeah, it is. I, um, you know, I was very surprised to, you know, I, um, I was very surprised to read that, to read that, check, check it out to make sure to make sure it worked and it did. Uh, like I said, I've never heard of a game doing this before. So yeah, that's um, interesting. But. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, Super Archetype I think was a very good game for type uh, time. Like I said before, early, the um, you know, early, early, early Super NES games, they're they're really trying to tell us that, that um, you know, you know, you know, they're really trying, they, they really like like trying to sell, sell the system, like you yeah. know, good graphics, good music, that kind of stuff. Um, playable today depends upon your standards. You know, like I said before, if you're a newbie, a newbie player, this actually maybe a good one to start with because the slowdown kind of helps you out. Um, obviously, 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 like an R type fan, you want to play this. Um, otherwise, um, you know, otherwise, general fans of shooters in general, I, 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 I honestly, I, I honestly just recommend pass, bypassing this and just playing the arcade version instead. You know, especially since the arcade version is available, like it's available to come on systems. Yeah, agreed. I mean, like I said, it's not a bad game, but just, just uh, um, but just definitely product of its time. Where it's like I think, like you know, things have changed considerably in thirty years, uh, thirty years plus since the, place that the game came out. But uh, we also should mention the power ups of it. The power ups available in the game, like real quick. Um, I'm curious. If, I'm curious. I'm curious if you had a favorite, Joe. Uh, you, you can pick up during the course of the game a shotgun bomb, a sky laser, a ground laser, a reflect laser, a spread laser, a homing missile, a homing missile like a thong bomb. Um, the spread laser is pretty good, I think. Uh, you know, I, I, um, you know, against certain bosses, the sky laser and the shotgun bombs are definitely um, um, definitely very good. Yeah, and those would be my nominees as well. But uh, I'm a sucker for homing missiles, so. Yep. Homing uh, missiles, nice you too. Know, yep. Absolutely love homing missiles. <laughs> but um, so uh, yeah, so um, that's pretty much about it as far as the game goes. Uh, I mean, like I said before, like uh, um, like you know, it's a very it was a, like it's a very interesting project. Um, you know, like not many games did this kind of thing. I, they have, I mean, there were others, but you know, the, um, uh, but Super Type is definitely kind of unique in a sense. So um, a good product of its time. But like I said before, just this game is so interesting in the sense that everything here kind of says like you know, like well, it's good in this sense and bad in the other. So. Right. Um, it's been a long time since we've covered a game. I think uh, um, I think they had so many, so many. Well, it does this, and it also does this things as this, right, um, right. As this game does for sure. But um, so, um, um, anything else you want to say about the game before we before, like move on, Joe? No, I'm. I mean, just echo your sentiment. You should at least check it out. Um, and you know, if you're a veteran, you probably aren't going to revisit this for the same reasons that we said. But uh, yeah, newbies, I think, should check this out. At least it's a good introduction to R Type, and uh, that slowdown can help you out and get you <laughs> to learn a couple strategies to carry on into future games. Right. Yep. So the game, it's like the game as I mentioned before, got mixed reviews when it came out, and like the mixed reviews pretty much carried over, like pretty much carried over, carried over, carried over, like like the present. The reviewers mentioned the same. The reviewers mentioned the same highlights and cons of the game that we already talked about. Uh, the app, uh, the aggregate score on game rankings as of right now is sixty one percent. So, um, you know, uh, Entertainment Weekly, for example, uh, gave like um, um, uh, I gave a score like the. I mean, gave a score like the seventies. They did. They did mention, however, that they that 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 that, that, um, that, 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 that they thought that the graphics of the game looked like looked like it was illustrations taken from like uh, pulp science this pulp science fiction magazines and comics of the nineteen thirties, which I think is a, um, which I didn't think about before. But yeah, I see if you know, yeah, uh, I um, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 I can too. So, um, you know, so. Joy, Joy Pad, a French magazine, gave a uh, French magazine gave the score of eighty seven percent. Super Gamer gave the, Super Gamer gave um, gave the score like seven, um, um, 
uh, flex, flex, flex 74%. So, yeah, very mixed ratings, like the game. Um, again, the highs are pretty high, the lows are pretty low. So, yeah. uh, your overall enjoyment of the game would depend upon what you're looking for. I think, kind of, that, 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 I, I, I think, uh, I think, like I'm into this. So, um, anyway, um, the game did sell well when it came out, so uh, oh, let's cover those uh, the codes. I already mentioned um, I already mentioned the hidden difficulty and also the music remix features this game has. The, um, there is a way to be able to uh, there is there is there is there is a stage select a stage select code they could code in the game uh, that you can use, uh, and and there's also a, and there's also there's also weapon select code that you can use. Um, so you can use those things to, you know, jump ahead to stages, stages, stages that you want to play, to practice on, or just get the weapons that you want to get. Uh, the game sold, the game sold pretty well at the time, so it's like pretty easy to find. Um, prices are also pretty cheap, uh, reflecting, by Super NES standards, reflecting the fact this game's not as popular as it, as it used to be. Um, I found the time to research, uh, for this podcast, 220 copies of the game were listed on eBay, 129 copies of the game that recently sold, these prices include shipping. Um, carts only, uh, the, uh, they sold anywhere from $8 to $27. So pretty cheap by Super NES standards. Hmm. Uh, CIB also was also like, pretty cheap, uh, cheap anywhere from, um, you know, anywhere from $29 to $32. So a very tight price range for this game, which you usually don't see in Super NES games, and also like pretty cheap as far as Super NES games go. Yeah, it's not bad at all. So. Anyway, so that's super art type. Um, you know, like a very, uh, um, you know, very, um, a, 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 a very, very interesting shooter, uh, like a time period. So, and also like reflective, um, you know, upon, you know, like on the franchise. I actually had missed the fact that, I, I actually had missed the fact that, that, I missed the fact that two new art type games came out in recent years. I mean, other, um, so I may have to check that out because, you know, I so said that, you know, I did, you know, I always, I always, I always did, I always did enjoy the art type games. Uh, you know, I you know I prefer the guys games more. But the R type games, I think, are also like pretty good, in, like their own respect. So obviously, there's, there's a, uh, I, I think that's a, so so now I know that so, so now I know like about the releases and also the, and also like, two new games. I'll check them out to see how they are. Yeah, I might have to look into that myself. There's still the, there's still a pretty active shooter market out there. I mean, like you know, there are still there are still core game players out there. <clears throat> um, I know that the 360, for example. The Xbox 360 saw a lot of shooters released for it. Yeah. The, the catches, 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 many of those shooters are, many, the catches, many, the catches, many, many of those shooters are, uh, like Japan only, uh, because, because shooting market's more popular in Japan. Right. However, power being a shooter, it's, it's not very prominent, it's not very, it's not very prominent, like, prominent point of them because the Japanese games give it, 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 it like, they're very light. Um, you know, we, yeah, we didn't, yeah, like, we didn't mention the story this game has. There is a story, but because, <laughs> you know, because it's shooter, you know, it's a uh, shooter, People don't you know, people don't pay attention to it. It's, you know, you know, typical like one you know one man ship fighting against like invading invading a Mata, uh empire kind of like thing. Yeah. So I, um, I my note I put uh, the story is you jump in your R nine and you take on the Bido Empire. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much it. So, <laughs> but so yeah. So there are. So I should not be surprised. It's a surprise the PS5 has. That, that, um, you know, you have shooters on it. So, um, you know, because and like I said, shoot, the shooter, the shooter market is still a thing. It just not as popular now as it, like it used to be. Yeah. Anyway, so that's super our type for you. Um, as always, we appreciate you listening to the podcast. Give us a few minutes of your day. Um. If you have any feedback, questions, suggestions, feel free to leave a, leave a comment on Facebook group or you can also send me an email directly to the SNES podcast at yahoo.com. Joe, where can they reach you at? You can find me on Twitter at J-O-E-S-U-X-3-0. Um, I have a very public Facebook. Uh, I also do the Radical Retro Roundup, um, which, uh, yeah, you can check that out, but it's not family friendly, so <laughs> keep that in mind. Don't play it in the office. Right. <laughs> um, we're about to record an episode on uh, covering 30 years of the uh, Blue Album by Weezer, so that's going to be fun. Oh, okay, all right. That's kind of that's kind of a side spinoff to the Radical Retro Roundup, but I haven't thought of like its own little thing yet, so it's just still part of the Radical Retro Roundup. And then uh, we're doing our typical doing a game thing, and we're doing. Uh, uh, SmackDown just bring it, which was technically the third game in the franchise. So, was yeah. that a 360 game? No, that's a PS2 game. PS2 game. Oh, because oh, yep. okay, so even earlier than that. Okay, all right. Yeah. yeah. So, yep. Um, I, I thought maybe I'd play that one, but I don't think so. I, I, I don't, don't think I play anything on the PS2 as far as that goes. 
Um, yeah, I. Uh, spoiler: uh, did We record in a week and a half, and I have not played that game yet. So. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I mean, wrestling games that type are not. Uh, yeah, the wrestling games that age are not, are not very deep. So. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and, and then, okay. you know, it's <laughs> it's literally the first game that transitioned from the original PlayStation to the PS2. So there isn't too much new. Um. So yeah, it's not you know, something I need to get heavily into, but yeah, it's right. George was like, I want to cover it. And I was like, eh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you had to play before. I had not. So, oh, okay. I, all right. I played all the other games. So that's why I'm saying, like, I, I get the general idea of what the game is, you know, because <laughs> pretty much they didn't change the formula for up to 10 years. Um, pretty much up until like 2007 is where they kind of really deviated from like the yeah, I've heard a lot general of, formula. I've also heard a lot of fans say that the uh, like fans say that in their own opinion that they thought the N64 that generation had the best wrestling games. It depends on what you're looking for. True. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> so like yeah, the Aki engine is probably one of the best engines created for sure, um, and it's more of a methodical and like you have to wear your opponent down kind of thing. And it's more simulation in that sense. Whereas the SmackDown games were very much arcade style. There was no, like there was no realism there. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, yep. um, yeah. And, and that's how those differed. And you know, some people like their simulation and some people don't. So. Right. Yeah. Totally fair. So coming up next to the podcast is another like super game that the flag already like teased about. Uh, we're <laughs> going to be covering Super Adventure Island, uh, which is another like you know uh, Super NES version of a very popular uh, franchise coming out to, coming out the first time I think of the system. I, yeah, I, yeah, I think Super Adventure Island was the first Super NES game. Just just a correction, Super Adventure Island Two. Oh, okay, all this right. This is the so. sequel. So yes, it, it had come out before. This is the sequel to that, um, and this is one of those like. You know, I I grew up with Adventure Island on the NES, so okay, yeah. You know, the fact that it's out on the Super Nintendo, and I've only played the first one, Super Adventure Island, so mm -hmm. this one's uh, going to be a mystery for me. But you know, you typically know what you're getting with uh, Master Higgins, so we'll see. True, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, yeah I also have not played that game because I because even I played. The, yeah, because I played the NES games a lot, but I yep. thought, but, but even though I enjoyed them, I, I enjoyed them. I thought they were also like super really difficult. So it's like, but if I super NES, I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to move on. So yeah, yep, I hear uh, you. But uh, yeah, I'm also curious to see how it plays. But um, anyway, um, that will be next time. Uh, thank you again very much for staying with us. Staying with us. Thank you, the thank you also very much for uh, like the uh, for dodging us in dodging us like the delay to get this episode out a week later than usual. Um, you know, as you probably may know about, um, you know, if you um, you know, if you look at things at all like Facebook, Joe recently got married, so congratulations. Yep, so, thank you. Uh, the like the week delay was because of that. So any complaints sent like sent his way. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> 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 um, but anyway, I, mon uh, we I monitor the Facebook, so you know if you have anything, <laughs> just post something there. <laughs> but we should be, uh, barring anything else happening, we should be on we should be on track for two weeks for two weeks flavors going forward, like the foreseeable future. So, yeah. um, uh, so as always, thanks again for everybody for listening. Uh, thanks again, Joe. Uh, Absolutely. See you again all next time, and uh, take care, everybody. Bye. Nintendo controls eighty percent of the video market. But no matter how you play the game, or which game you play, things definitely have come a long way since Pac-Man. Now you're playing with power. Deep on power.